Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, a data analyst. My name is Patrick Goldschmidt, and I'm a data analyst. Um, and data analyst talking about open source intelligence might sound weird. Uh, because if we think of intelligence, we think of CIA, BND, and maybe MI6. And if we have these terms, we might think of this guy, and we think of weapons, and spies, and top, uh, yeah, super cool technologies, and we think that's what they do all day long, but what they, with what they spend most of the time is doing this, reading newspaper. So why are they doing this? Why do they do invented a thing like open source intelligence, and I use this term because this is what we do at Ubermetrics. They read newspapers because they want to understand what their uh, opponents do. And they don't have the problem that they don't have enough data. They have a lot of data, but they don't get insight out of their data if they don't have the context. And they get the context if they read a newspaper in, of this other country and get insights out of that, and then combine that. And this is a problem we have in the business, uh, in the business too. So we, uh, as we just saw, we're trying to create user behavior patterns and derive insights from that that we can use in our data-driven technology. But internal data doesn't always explain the user behavior. So we need an extra variable. Okay, let's say back to business. Um, business analytics at Burger King. We look, we peer over the shoulder of a data analyst in the headquarter in Miami of Burger King, and she comes in the office in the morning and looks on her dashboard and sees a red, a red sign, means a drop in sales. So she opens her, her tableau and looks for the data, and it comes out, it's, it's this Germany. And then she starts slicing and dicing the data and to find the reason. But she, she cannot find any reason. Okay, what, what, what could be the next steps? Maybe the marketing campaign ran bad, but we, we, we do run only, only standard campaigns. What, what can run bad? Okay, let's call the data warehouse team in Germany. Maybe they have a problem with the ATL process or the IT supplier, the, the provider of the uh, cash register systems. But she won't find the, the issue because it's external. So last year, Burger King had a hygiene issue. The last two weeks, there were airline strikes, and Burger King has a lot of outlets uh, at airports. So with this context information, maybe for just from newspaper, she... Uh, would have solved the problem and we're not spending time on analyzing stuff that could not be explained by internal data only. Another reason why uh, agencies using open source intelligence, it is slightly cheaper than, than chips bond. So when I talk about open source, what, what do I mean by open source? sources, and uh, how can we objectify trendiness in open sources to, to identify hot topics? And let's talk about digital transformation. This is a topic you can read everywhere about. And so let's take, for example, Twitter. You follow influencers on Twitter, or you Google for, for influencers or the topic and subscribe to blogs, or you, you read industry-specific source um, newspapers, online uh, versions of it, and yeah, there are quite a, quite a number of, of sources on this planet. I mean, you could watch TV as well, subscribe to podcasts about this topic, listen to the radio. There are sources everywhere. So I, we are all here in Big Data, and I follow a lot of Big Data influencers on Twitter and Kirk Bourne. I counted his tweets yesterday. It's been 30 tweets yesterday. 
and have other influences too. And yeah, when I open my Twitter stream, it feels like an uh, information autobahn. Everything is passing by and it's too fast and too much. And I think I'm not the only person uh, on this planet who has this problem. So what could be the solution in, with this information flood? And this, this cannot be a solution to open different lanes and to watch the information or simultaneously on, on different lanes. So how can we handle that and what can we do from a data-driven perspective? And I would suggest that we dive into that flood, grab a single data point and look what we can do. So I took here a mansion for about a digital transformation. And yeah, if I put my, my data analyst glasses on and look at this mansion, we see text. Okay, we can calculate the sentiment on the text. Here it's boring, it's neutral, it's yellow. Okay, well, but we have our first dimension derived from this mansion, the sentiment. Then we have time, the second dimension for our analyst. Then we have the author, Craig Brown. We have the source, Twitter, and the blue one means microblogs. So we have five dimensions already that we can derive from news, from open sources. And now, with these five dimensions, we can aggregate data. We can aggregate streams of information and visualize them and find patterns. Maybe by eyeballing. And if we do that, so the color here is the media segment. So we have news, blue is microblogs, social networks. But we have it over time and per day. But what you cannot see here, but yeah, context information, if you have a calendar, then you would see the valleys in the data are the weekends. So every time you leave on Friday your office, digital transformation stays in the office. Nobody talks on the weekend about digital transformation. So it seems like it's a business topic. So given that what we've learned now, that we can sum up communication to yeah, aggregated data and use it in, in our algorithms, in our dashboards, in our reports. We can go back to the, to the problem of our Burger King data analyst because she had trouble. What, what she was already doing, she got her data from SAP, the cash register systems. She got data from Salesforce because they're using a CRM system right now. They are delivering burgers to the customers, so they have a CRM system. Uh, they have, of course, Google Analytics from, from their websites. They have marketing campaigns on, on the internet, on, on newsletters. So she had all that data. But as we learned, she was not able to, to get an insight out of, of the data why the sales dropped. And now we just add a tablespoon of contextual information and get our insight smoothly right away. And now she knows what happened and she has the context and she don't spend time on figuring out what was the problem with the sales there. Let me show you another example of analysts are set up for this event here. I took, I, I used Ubermetrics to monitor politicians and their parties in 2015 the communication, and counted the keywords they were using, and looked which, which were rising, rising topics. And I think we're all aware of that refugees is a, a mayor topic, but um, during, during my, my analysis, I, I found out that the topic refugee crisis wasn't there in the beginning of the year. It raised up some time. And so I looked at Google Trends, what Google Trends gives me. When, when did people start searching about that topic? And yeah, I took both, both data sets and uh, to, yeah, to do it, uh, to, see, to say how, how I did it like in reality. I did it with data virtuality. Um, they connect APIs and it was easy to connect our API 
and uh, to integrate the data from Google Trends, and uh, because sometimes data is an object based, but it made it easy to, to bring it into a table and row based, so I could analyze it with Tableau and create a nice visualization. And this is the visualization on the German term refugee crisis. And where I want to focus on is only this very first beginning. You see that uh, in the end of August, the, num the mentions uh, um, with, with the topic refugee crisis hit uh, 1,000 per day. It's analysis per day. So before it was below 1,000. And in the same time, there was no Google Trend. So Google Trend gave me on that term no information for quite a while. And then it starts and the topic breaks out and it, takes, it gets uh, dynamic. And um, of course, now you, you could do some prediction analysis and, and stuff like that. But what I want to say and what, I, what, what is the, the idea of this talk is you can do trend analysis with public available data. And then you maybe get insights about the trend before it rises and before your customers are searching for. So I analyzed 1.5 million, no, <laughs> I used pre-aggregated and filtered 1.5 million documents for this, for this analysis. But it turned out that I only had to use a 300 row data set for this visualization. And yeah, to come to a short end of this talk, we had already some customers who turned big data into smaller big data, or call it smart data. Um, so for example, uh, have you ever get a notice from your delivery guy that he ringed the bell, nobody was there, but actually you have been there? That's the thing you, you can complain about, and maybe you complain about on Twitter or whatever. So DHL is uh, monitoring that issue, their product quality on, uh, with, with, with communication data. Uh, Osram is actually doing what, what I told you right now. If they have, um, uh, if they la launch a product, they compare the communication and their marketing spendings to see what was the impact of this campaign. Yeah, and last but not least, Danone gets, the executive board of Danone gets a fresh insight, smoothie, regularly with uh, communication data from from their uh, consumers directly. So thank you very much for listening and yeah, have a nice day. Thanks.